Let's get started. So where's SDIO? We are content anywhere. So is SDIO, we are our content management system. Um, so a content management system is somewhere where you can store all your content, distribute to web, applications, or mobile apps, wherever you need it to go. Um, and as a content management system, we're comprised of three major components. Uh, so the first is obviously content. You can't be a CMS without content. The second is going to be media. We have something we call microdam, um, and that's so you can upload images, videos, and whatnot. And the third is web engine, and that allows you to produce websites and distribute content over the internet. So each of these has a, an accessible API to developers and a graphical user interface that is accessible to anybody. So the first we're going to go over is content. Um, any configuration is possible. You can build anything from product content to team content to just general web page content. Um, you can have in-game content, etc. The, there's no limit. It's like an open canvas. And when you create content, you can set up relationships so team members can be part of a team, products can be part of a category, articles can be tagged, etc. Uh, there's no limit to what can be done there as well. So all content that is built has versioning. Uh, you can publish it and set it when to schedule to publish. And SEO meta tags is out of the box. It makes, makes it a little bit different than other CMSs is that we're really geared towards distributing it over search engines. Um, it's an option, but it's always going to be there for you. And then there's a full user interface and you can add permissions. You can customize if people can see certain things to edit or whatnot. Uh, and then it's API accessible, full read, write, um, and that's what makes it headless. So let's talk about media, which we call the micro dam. Supports PDFs, images, files, and videos. Uh, it's globally distributed by CDN out of the box, uh, and that's 10 milliseconds time the first byte. Uh, that's powered by Fastly. And image sizes are programmable when you're working with Web Engine, and they automatically optimize as well. And there's organizational tools and a graphical user interface for this, so you could drag and drop, upload media. And it's API accessible for reading or writing, making it headless. So Web Engine. Uh, so Web Engine is what we call kind of our website generator. It's uh, instant global scalable for any type of website. So it's going to be distributed on a CDN statically when you um, hit save or publish. And there's stage and production environments, so any type of version or code you're working on for the actual website, you can share with uh, peers with a stage URL and test everything there before you publish. Uh, so that, in, in turn, intertwines easily into content publishing workflows. Somebody could be editing a version. They can view that version, share it, etc. And both the code and content has version control with it, so you can have multiple. You can go back to code you had, and you can store it locally and hook it up to GitHub as well. And there's instant SEO benefits out of the box. So all the stuff you don't want to do, the pain in the butt stuff that comes with SEO that's constantly changing, Web Engine automates for you. And it's also API accessible uh, for reading and writing, making it headless. That's what makes it possible to have plugins like the Atom Editor and external stuff that we work with, like the Node Wrapper, et cetera. So let's jump into Zesty. Um, so you create an account. Uh, if you don't have an account already, you can just go to zestyio.com and create an account uh, here by clicking create an account and follow this workflow and essentially you're going to get into a situation like this uh, you can see a lot of my instances but the first thing we're going to do is create an instance we're going to call this um, demo what's the date today june something june 14th live demo Okay, so you're going to get some options to create a blueprint. What is a blueprint? Essentially, it is a, a series of CSS and HTML files that lets you get started with your instance. Uh, and this purpose, I'm going to go with nothing. So I'm going to show you guys kind of front to back how to set up your instance uh, without starting with some blueprints. So we're going to select blank slate. So now you're going to get into an area that this shows you kind of the your instance. It's like your overview. You see what users have access to it. You have team access. There's blueprints that you can actually change. You can view it on GitHub as well. Um, you can set your domain here. We don't need to really do anything at this point. I could say invite a user, for example. 
um, but the first thing we want to do is click this open manager button uh, the first time we open it's going to be generating the CDNs and the buckets and all the good stuff we need behind the scenes to make Zesty work uh, so the first load takes a few seconds and once you're in you're going to be into pretty much a blank dashboard that has a home page and something called globals so if we click back into accounts there's another button uh, here called open preview this is going to open our stage URL and since we're using blank there's not much to see here um, but just to give you an example if we click in the home page blank pretty much starts with one content model which is called home page and there's a title so if I type hello world hit save and I refresh my preview there we go you can see that that that's all we start with that being connected so really to get started just to get an overview is we have content media and editor editor is what accesses the web engine files um, so as we described in our opener right content is the base then media then editor um, with content comes schema so in order to build out different content areas to edit you have to go into schema and that's what we're going to do um, so let's just go in the schema and we'll notice over here we have home page and globals so if we click in the home page we'll see that it has uh, three data fields on this content model which is lead in title intro text and main image let's just add one for example uh, we'll say title 2 so this has added a, a field to the first content model which is called home page and we'll just drag that up you can control where it comes and then let's go back in the content um, and let's click in the home page and we're gonna see now that we have title 2 so we'll say hello Mars and hit save so now we have two different titles lead in title and title 2 and if you notice that we have different versions of this now so if we go back to version 1 you can see it was just called home page version 2 is when we changed it to hello world version 3 is when we added hello Mars you can also choose to publish this since this isn't hooked up to a live website uh, we're not going to publish it right now because it won't do anything. Um, what we do have access to is this preview URL here, and that's where we've been looking. Um, so now that we see this preview URL here, it still says Hello World. We didn't see Title 2, which is Hello Mars. Um, so we're going to jump into the other part. So each content model has a content area to edit, uh, where you edit content items and you have the versions. It has its schema where you actually control what the content model can see, the different data fields, right? So we'll look at the schema again real quick, like this lead in title, title to intro text, etc. And it's also going to have a view, and that view is what's going, what render web engine is going to render. Um, so if we click on home page we'll see that you're we're looking at basic HTML here when I zoom in here is it zooming in on the uh, no okay so if we look here we have page title we're gonna add a second title I'm literally gonna copy and paste this make this an h2 it does, yeah. it does? okay and so let's see let's just zoom in there's a lag um, let's zoom in so you see I have page I had title I can access content image or title 2 I'm gonna select title 2 I'm gonna hit save here and I'm gonna preview the output now I have two titles hello world and hello Mars so let's jump in the media um, media essentially is an area that you can drag and drop files uh, to have access uh, instantly puts it on the CD and whatnot so let's just grab an image we have should have threw an image on my desktop but I didn't <laughs> let's just steal an image from the internet uh, zesty orange let's see what we get there it's a nice orange peel here image acquired great so you can just drag and drop images right into this and now we have access to this zesty orange image so from here you can you can change the title um, you can copy the the URL so if I copy the URL opened it you'll see that I have access to that now this is on the CDN 
And this started with this funny little house. Uh, we're going to swap that out. So we're going to go back in the content now. Click on home page. We can delete this main image and we can select media from this point. And I can select the orange peel. Hit save. And now I'm going to get access to that. So I have an orange peel. And, and what Web Engine did right there was it cropped it. So let's just look at that. Let's talk about optimization of images. So your programmers or your developers can actually control the output of the image, or they can just output the raw image. In most cases, you want to control it. That way, at least it's optimized for speed on the web. You can also do source sets and, and different methods like that to optimize for different devices. Um, but if we look here, we had page image and get image. It was 400 to 350 crop, so it kind of created a funny rectangle. We can just get rid of that and for example, if we get rid of that and then refresh, we're going to get the full image. And it's a really large orange peel. And you can still see says hello world, hello Mars, etc. So, in the audience, do you guys have any questions at this point? If you type any comments. No questions that have been shared in the chat yet. Is there anyone in the chat? What are you guys building? All right, so we'll just keep building like we're going to build a traditional website. So I'm going to grab a CSS framework, uh, one called Bulma that I like. So Bulma is a CSS framework, comes with grids and some very basic uh, things to kickstart a website with. Um, and how I'm going to link it is going to be with a, a CDN, something that already exists on the web. Uh, and I'm just going to pull it in through like a traditional link tag. So I'm going to grab the CSS here, jump back in, and in my code editor there's something called a loader. So we have a home page. Home page is a view attached to the model called home page. And we're going to click into the loader, and we're going to see something that says current view. Uh, what that's going to do, loader gets hit every time a content item's path is accessed, and loader runs. Um, and then loader essentially just is passing through current view, but we can control this. If you imagine like this is going to be wrapped in your body tag essentially. So if I go link href paste and say rel style sheet. And actually since it's CSS, I want it to load above my HTML. Otherwise it'll, there'll be lag on the application of it. So now if we refresh we're going to see that it's starting to pick up the styles. Uh, so let's go back into the home page. We're going to um, comment out this image for now. And how you comment out is parentheses with a double asterisk. And we're going to add a class that Bulma uses called title. I think we can say like size one here. And we can start to see that be applied. So now we have our title. So at this point, you can start pulling out scaffolding from the Bulma system um, and building out your page. So for example, I can wrap this in a div class container. And now you're seeing it starting to center. So let's create a new content model. So let's create a content model called articles. It's pretty standard to create articles for a blog or whatnot. So we're going to have three options, single view, group review, and headless. Essentially, these top two options are going to give you a view that will render in Site Engine. Um, that view will give you access to build out like an HTML page. If you don't need to use any HTML, you can pick headless. Um, things that work for headless are like tags or, or list items or whatnot that don't need an HTML view. But since we're building articles, we're going to pick a group of view. And we'll just call this articles. Create. So now we're in an empty content model. We need to add some fields to it. And the first field could be title for building out an article. And the second field 
will be the content. Or let's just qualify it more, call article body. And then we can add an article image here. So what I'm doing is I, I have options to, you know, there's quite a few different types of data fields. Uh, pretty standard is like text and then WYSIWYG and images. But you can also get access to something like date. So we did date created on an article, we can do that. You can create drop downs, URL links, internal links, date times. There's like a yes and no Boolean field, numbers. There's colors, which we can create a color. Uh, and then there's one to one relationships and one to many relationships, which we can cover um, when we create our second content model called tags. So let's create this image here. And for fun, let's create one called color. And we'll just call it like background color. So now we have a content model called articles, but there aren't any articles in it yet. But we can access that now when we click in the content. We now have home page and articles. And if you notice that the icon's different, it's because articles is going to load in a table view because you can have lots of articles. So let's create our first article called Hello YouTube. And we need some good content here. So Hello YouTube. This is uh, what you see is what you get, editor. So you can see in our WYSIWYG editor, you have your standard controls. Um, you can also jump around, like say, into the HTML or back into WYSIWYG, etc. And then for the image, let's select our orange peel. You can also drag and drop and upload from that area as well. And for our background color, let's pick an orange. So if you notice down here, it's starting to auto-populate meta settings. Um, I can also choose a parent here, um, but there aren't really any other places to parent right now since it's just a home page and there's articles. So it's creating a URL path part. So it's taking the very first um, text field it noticed and it starts populating the path part. Same thing as the navigation link, the meta title, and the meta description is going to access either a text area or a WYSIWYG and it's the first one that it sees it will start populating that with. Um, this is all obviously editable. Um, we can edit it later. So let's create our first item. Hello YouTube. Um, now we're in here, you can see we have um, what versions are happening. Let's add a couple exclamation marks here. You can start to see we're getting versions. We can jump back and forth the versions. There's item status over here. Uh, and this item is unpublished. Uh, and it shows who it was last edited by. And you can see the images. And you can just make changes from here. Um, there's also, if you click on meta, you can jump in and you can edit the meta here. This is for search engines. And you can see that it's giving you a little preview of what it would look like in a search engine in the top right. Uh, you can also change its page parent and the path all here. Okay, so we have our first article. Um, and let's just say we are, aren't building a website using Zesty's web engine, but we're going to need to access that um, with JSON to build headlessly. Uh, the first thing we're going to do to do that is we need to go into our settings. Um, out of the box, uh, it's not turned on. You have to, as a developer, turn it on. And we're going to turn on these uh, the Instant JSON API. Um, that's documented. Everything's documented on zesty.org. I'll just show you what that looks like real quick. You can see this Instant API is here, and there's documentation on how to access it. Um, it's one of many ways you can access your data uh, headlessly. So I'm going to hit Save here. I'm going to turn all these on. And I'm going to give this a refresh because it's going to pick up new settings. Now when I click into my article, I'm going to see this instant API is now showing under the item status. And if I click this, it's going to give me a JSON feed of that article. So this is how we would build headlessly at this point. Uh, in zesty.org, there are a series of uh, headless code examples that you can run through from React to building static sites to using Ruby, etc. You can also search over here. We have, it's a nice search um, that can help you find different articles and how to access the information headlessly. So now let's, let's go back in the web engine and let's take a look at what this um, view is going to look like. So here we have something called the preview URL, which we've clicked before. Uh, I'm going to close out some of these now. And preview URL. And there's nothing here. 
So we created a content model that created a view that was paired to it, but we didn't edit anything in the view. So we're going to jump into the editor and we're going to look for a view called articles. And you can see on the left that that exists. Um, so we're just going to output our title here. And if you could type this, it's going to know that whatever it's viewing from this view, the object like the article, this will have access to. So this title, um, zoom in here for you. You'll see that the fields that we built in the content model are accessible here and they autocomplete. So we're going to grab this title. And we're going to give it that class title because I know Balma has that and size one. We're going to hit save. So now if we view Hello YouTube, you can see the title is coming out. So let's let's just connect everything up. Uh, let's create a div class content. That's another Bulma thing. And then we're going to use this. So what, what you're seeing when I open up the double curly brackets, we call that Parsley. Now basically, Parsley is a unique way to connect all your content to a view dynamically. Uh, we also have an image. So again, we're going to use Parsley, grab image, and then we're going to do get image. And we can give an alt tag, and the alt tag could be this title image like that. So let's see what the output is. You can see the bottom of it and the giant Rhine. So let's make that image not giant. So you, if you throw in something like 300 here, it's going to resize it to 300 and optimize it. Let's refresh and see what happens there. Cool. So now you can see we have our title and our image and our body content. Just build a little more HTML out here. And if you remember, we had a color, so we actually could create, um, we can give this um, whole container a background, we can give the content a background, we can give the um, style background. So let's just show an example. So I'm going to say style, background, color, and then I can get access to this dot background color. I mean, this is going to look obnoxious, but it shows you the power of what you can do with it. So now you can see that background color is there. We've got our little orange picture and our content. So let's go change that content. Hello YouTube, question mark, question mark. And let's change the background color to a very nice pink. And hit save and let's see our preview, what's gonna happen. We got question marks and it's now pink. Now let's create a, an additional article called Hello Live Stream. We'll just add some very great text in there. For media, we'll select the Rhine again. And background color of bright green, so we can't miss it. Create item. So again, create an item. Up here, there's breadcrumbs. I can click on articles, and I can see my two my two articles and the two colors that are there. Um, now if I jump, if I click this little preview guy here, it's going to open up that preview. And now I have my two previews, Hello YouTube, which is in pink, and Hello Livestream, which is in green. So how do I start connecting the routing on my homepage? I'm going to jump in the editor. I'm going to click in the homepage. And here I'm going to do something that we call an each loop. Um, so in Parsley, I start typing each, and I'm going to grab articles as article. And we have to end each every time we open an each. So now we're going to loop through each article. Um, so if we just said h2, we now if we said article, it's going to know what you have access to, like title, body, image, background color. So can select title here, H2. Save that. So now if we go preview our homepage, 
we're going to see it's it's looping through hello youtube hello live stream it's kind of hard to notice so let's add a little bit more html to that we'll make it an unordered list So you can see Bulma does some weird things. It pretty much strips out a lot for you. So let's just steal the code. See if that did anything. Okay, now we have a much prettier looking list. So we have Hello YouTube and Hello Livestream. Uh, and then we want to make those links to that, to those articles. So we're inside of an each loop. Now we're getting the two outputs of these anchor tags. We can give these an H reference, and we can simply dynamically link to an article by saying get URL save refresh and now each one of these is going to go to its article page and you can see we're starting to build routing now we did get a question about articles sure can you embed Instagram posts in articles you can so if we were to go um, let's go Instagram Let's continue as me. Uh, Two factor security. Security is everybody's responsibility. <laughs> and then we got another question after. Um, can we do sales like putting inventory and start selling from this website and do payments online? Uh, we can. We have to use a, a third-party application like Snipcart. Let's see if we can share YouTube. It, I mean, uh, Instagram has really changed the way you can embed based on privacy settings. So I'm probably breaking privacy laws here. Let's see. Let's get this fish photo. Great. Embed. Perfect. Copy. Uh, I don't want the caption. Copy. So we're going to jump in the content. Uh, what's cool here is the Zesty dashboard starting to learn my behaviors, right? And I only have a couple of items I've worked on, but it knows I have these two. Hello Livestream, Hello YouTube. Let's jump in the Hello Livestream. Let's do embed Instagram, paste, insert embed, save. And I believe it is the Hello Livestream. Okay, there it is. Get rid of this guy. Okay, save. Hello, live stream. Now we have a fish. It looks like Bulma is cutting it off. So you'd have to do some CSS to make sure that that's not getting cut off. All right, so the other question was about e commerce. Mm -hmm. um, Snipcart is a great partner that is really easy to embed into Zesty. Uh, and I'm not going to hijack this to show that example, but that's what you would use. Um, so it's pretty easy to say create. Um, you could pretty much turn anything into a sellable article, um, sellable item in Zesty um, by hooking Snipcart up to it, and uh, it's something that we can produce an article for you or show you a video at another time for.
Okay, so jumping back into it, we're going to go to our home page. We notice that we're now linking through our articles here. Um, we have dynamic content. So let's, let's create a header and a footer um, because all our websites are really not fun without a header and footer. There's not ways to navigate around unless it exists. Um, so to do that, we're going to jump back into the editor. And we're going to jump into Balma and we're going to steal one of Balma's. They have a nice nav bar example. So we're pretty much going to grab this code here. So remember, every time a, a dynamic piece of content is hit in Zesty, the very first file that gets hit is called the loader. You can almost imagine it as your app shell. Um, so that's going to get hit, and then current view is going to load. Um, it's going to pass through to like your homepage view or to your article view, etc. Um, so inside the editor, we can create a snippet, and I'm going to call it header. And I'm going to paste in this um, this Balma nav bar. So this is a straight up for where I copied it. I'm going to go into the loader, and I can type include header right so now every page is going to get that header and there it is right so now if I click in the hello YouTube it's gonna have that header as well so let's make that header um, actually connect to our website so the very first part right here is the logo which is gonna bring you to the home page hit save there and then I'm going to do something clever with the articles we created, right? So you have this nav bar has drop downs, hoverable has these different um, items in here. So basically, I'm going to delete what's there because I don't need that. I'm going to write another each loop. So articles as, say, nav article. and each. I'm going to paste back in that one example code I had and I'm basically going to swap out um, so nav article dot um, zoomed in. So I, there's something called meta link text that's going to access the meta area with the short link because I don't necessarily want the title because the title could be something huge that I don't want to deal with. Um, so I'm just going to use meta link text and then for the h reference here if you remember I need to do nav article dot get URL save okay let's see what happens we now are going to get articles here that we can click to and we can click to the home page now we're starting to get around where we're building and all the routing to hook up this website okay so we are at uh, we're about 30 minutes in we had a little bit of a late start uh, um, we did get a question can you build RSS feeds you can um, so zesty out of the box comes with a sitemap dot uh, XML which is here it's only going to show published items we haven't published anything yet um, but that's automated if you want to build an RSS feed you can create um, what we call an endpoint right now and you can say like um, articles.rss create and it's pretty basic so you're going to say rss template just go here I'm just going to snag this code what's cool is you can really customize this uh, inside of our tray over here you, there's a quick link to get to it and now you see that we have an RSS feed here um, and then you can go through and so it's just like the same concept that we did with that with linking up the articles in the home page just say each articles as an article I'm going to take this as my example ditch this one and now I'm going to be looping through so the title I would just say article dot grab meta title the link would be article dot get URL and description so you can like strip out the text so I can grab um, 
article dot article body and I can say like strip tags and if I only want to show like uh, 180 characters I can do this hit save now if we view our RSS feed that's our sitemap you'll see that we're pulling in information right here so that's how you can build an RSS feed you can customize it you can loop through multiple like content models that you have access to uh, and you can build it that way and again, the sitemap tool is automated. Any other questions? Not yet. Yeah, so that's a good base understanding of like how web engine works with the content models. Uh, the headless stuff is pretty easy to cover because simply you just you get this instant API here. Um, you can see it here. Uh, you can also create like different on the headless front like you can use editor um, and web engine to create custom you know either you know JSON endpoints so I could create one called articles.json and you can build out like JSON here like if I just show you this example we can loop through it but right so there's some JSON I can click this button to open it and you can see I'm starting to get JSON, a custom JSON. So you can build out what you want. We also have uh, the ability, we have a, a video on YouTube that shows you how to pull down for GraphQL. Um, and we have a full REST API too that's documented at instances-api.zesty.org that you can also use to build out um, items. We have a node wrapper as well that's accessible you just search it and you can pull that down of npm uh, and we have an SDK and npm as well um, so I think that covers the basis of an introduction of Zesty uh, if you have further questions you can reach out to us we have a developer chat so if you go to Zesty.io um, click platform click community chat it's something you can invite yourself to you just throw your email in here and you can get to the developer chat. So you just drop your email in, hit click join, and you're good to go. Um, you can also reach out to us at the chat box on the website. Um, but you're free to start your own instance, uh, create a sandbox, and just reach out to us in chat, and we can help you through. How much is a sandbox? Sandboxes are free. <laughs>